introduce Brian Waller, and I want to uh, to tell you a little bit about Brian. For those of you that don't know Brian, I am lucky to know Brian for many years, and uh, I'm a huge personal big fan fan of Brian and everything that he does on behalf of the state of Iowa and on behalf of technology. Um, just a neat summary though. So Brian is a graduate of Colorado State University. He didn't attend one of our, our Big Ten schools here, so that's, that's interesting info. Um, he started out at, at the Science Center, actually, so maybe that's where his love of technology began, since they do so much in that STEM field, right? Um, so he worked uh, with the Science Center and he helped to lead the relaunch of the Court Avenue District in downtown Des Moines. That's giant. Uh, in 2010, he began to work as executive director of the Des Moines Downtown Chamber of Commerce. So he has a lot of history in the chamber world. Uh, in 2011, he began working at the IEDA, so the Iowa Economic Development Authority, where he focused there on connecting existing Iowa businesses to the people and resources that make businesses successful. Um, in September of 2014, Brian was named president of the Technology Association of Iowa, where he is today, obviously, and this is a fun, fun personal fact. Uh, Brian is married to Dr. Callie Waller, and Dr. Waller is a physician at Unity Point in Norwalk. They live in West Des Moines. Yay! Go West Des Moines! Uh, they have a daughter, Parker, sons, Asher, and Mare, and as well as a border collie, Mr. Jenkins. So I, uh, I think that's really fun. In Brian's free time, he's an avid golfer, a musician, and he has a passion for laughing, life, faith, friends and family. So welcome, Brian Waller. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Catherine. I'm uh, really excited to be here in this environment. I Please, I got to ask for a little forgiveness in case there's some technical difficulties or something uh, happens, but I'm really happy to be here. I wish it was in person, but I know this is the way things are. Also to Chelsea at Make-A-Wish, I think it's uh, always fascinating. Uh, you know, you think you're you're so focused on your own organization and what you're going through, but to hear about those kids missing their wishes at this point just really is, uh, is really a uh, that hits me and I just think the work that you're doing it is amazing. Um, today what I'm going to talk about for the next 15 minutes or so is the Iowa technology industry uh, and the Technology Association of Iowa and some programming that we do, uh, specifically highlighting a, a thing called the Iowan Project where we're trying to recruit former Iowans, Iowa expats as we are called them, back to the state of Iowa. Um, uh, we do a lot of work on a, on a personal level as a resident of West Des Moines for the last 17 years wonderful community to be a part of and especially now with the partnership with Google Fiber I think that's just a huge deal and not only uh, the state of Iowa but nationally to put, put us on the radar so really happy to speak with you today um, I, I'm going to share my screen here to get things started here. All right, hopefully you can all see that. Uh, the Technology Association of Iowa, just a little bit about us. Um, we are a trade association. We represent uh, Iowa technology professionals and Iowa technology companies. We have around 350 member companies. Uh, and so just to start off with, I wanna highlight just a handful of companies just to, so you can get your mind around who our uh, membership base is. Um, our, our goal is to build and unite Iowa's technology industry. And I'm gonna get into demystifying what exactly IT workers do and what the technology industry is. Um, but first, just kind of a, an overview. If you think about uh, some of the, the highly technical companies, they're actually ones that you really don't think about as highly technical. And as we sit here today, I think about a member like the state of Iowa uh, and the Iowa workforce development. Their CIO, Neil Shaw, has been inundated with uh, work on unemployment claims and making sure their website is up and running. So you think about digital government uh, and the way that's going to move in the future. Uh, when I talked to the CIO of the state of Iowa, Annette Dunn, about how the, this is going to shift, she thought this could be valuable for rural Iowa employment. The state of Iowa never thought that they could employ people virtually or, or remotely. You had to be in downtown Des Moines or in Des Moines to, to do that. They're seeing that you can work remotely. So that might be a positive uh, for, uh, for uh, employment across the state of Iowa in rural areas. But if you think about Unity Point Health, uh, and our, our, our board chair this year is Laura Smith, the CIO of Unity Point Health. Telemedicine right now is absolutely exploding. I know on a personal level, my wife's a family doctor, but the way that people are shifting, how they're interacting with their doctors now, 
So Unity Point is one of our major members of telemedicine. Not only telemedicine, but how are they securing your personal uh, health data uh, and doing that through cybersecurity and, and things like that. So Unity Point. Another good member is hy V. Uh, and think about um, hy V said they have accelerated into the future over the last three months, like in three years. Think about the way they've reacted to aisles online so you don't have to go in. Uh, they have opened a brand new technology uh, office space in Grimes, and uh, they've been doubling down for about two years now and making sure hy V is a technology company. And I think now more than ever, you're seeing how uh, much uh, they were prepared to be nimble. Uh, so Iowa's online and hy V is a really big thing. And that software that they developed is really helping Iowans and people in the Midwest right now. Uh, you think about Wells Enterprises, uh, ice cream manufacturer in Northwest Iowa and Lamar's. I'm originally from Sioux City, so this is around my neck of the woods. But uh, uh, Wells Blue Bunny sees himself as, an, as a technology company that produces ice cream. Uh, Ryan Scoff is the CIO there. He was our board chair last year. Uh, an example of what they did, uh, Mike Wells, the owner of Wells Enterprises, said, hey, I need a dashboard where at the end of the day, I can look at where the ice cream sales were all across the country and what brands were selling. Well, that's something that, that Ryan had to create and they put together so you knew that Rocky Road was selling in Arkansas more than vanilla ice cream in a different state. And so that's all technology. Uh, and, and the final one I'll share with you is a, is, a, is a company called Rantizo out of Iowa City. They are a drone spraying company, so they would spray fields. Um, drones would go around your, uh, your, your farm fields and spray. Well, they have pivoted their company, Rantizo has now, where they're doing sanitary spraying of, of sports stadiums so people can go back in. So if you think about Major League Baseball, NBA, the Major League Soccer, they all contacted this Rantizo sprays co this company out of Iowa City, this little company, that there's going to send drones around stadiums and spray and disinfect to make sure that we're in, uh, get a chance to be in stadiums at some point. Those are just an example. And I want you to know that every Iowa company is a technology company. We're seeing that now more than ever. Uh, the first thing before I jump into my spiel, I want to just give a brief history of Iowa technology and, and two Iowans that have made an impact on our world that we should be proud they're born and raised and they are Iowans. And I'll make the connection to the Iowan project later in, in this uh, this. Uh, uh, program. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Clifford Berry and John Vincent Atanasoff. Uh, John Vincent Atanasoff was a professor at Iowa State University when a student named Clifford Berry from Gladbrook, Iowa came to campus and the two of them together developed the first electronic digital computer uh, ever in 1942 that was created at, at Iowa State University. So if you think about the impact on Iowa and technology, are we a technology state? Absolutely, we're a technology state. We created the first digital electric, electric digital computer right here in the state of Iowa. That is a claim to fame, and that's something that we're very proud of. And we believe every Iowa company is a technology company, and they need to think that way. These are two Iowans that really started it. Uh, another Iowan that I want to share with you is a guy by the name of Robert Noyce. Uh, Robert Noyce was born and raised in Burlington and moved to Grinnell later in life. Uh, but Robert Noyce uh, was born and raised in Burlington. Uh, he created the microchip. Uh, and the microchip, uh, uh, what's in the microchip was, was an element called silicon. And he moved his company out to Northern California and he created Intel. The reason you have cell phones today, you can have all that, is because of the microchip. And it's because of Robert Noyce, a guy that was born and raised and educated in Iowa. And because of the silicon that was in his microchip, they created the name, the Silicon Valley. So if you think about Northern Iowa, Northern California technology, that was created, that whole thing was created by an Iowan that was born and raised here. So we have a really great history of, of individuals like this that have really been creating technology solutions throughout uh, in the technology space. Uh, a little bit about this, the state of technology. I, I wanna demystify it. Some people don't know, what, what do you mean by technology? What does an IT worker do? And I think now more than ever, we're seeing when people working virtually, IT support, software, and hardware are becoming so important. So just a little brief overview of what information technology is. It's a technology involving the development, maintenance, and use of computer systems, software, and networks for processing and distribution of data. So when we talk about IT, that's what IT is. If you think about what does that mean, uh, you know, basically IT workers, the ones that we represent, uh, IT workers help ensure that computers and systems work well for people. You think about hy V. why are they a member and who engages? Well, all of their IT teams, their CIO, their CISO, really engage with our organization to try to make Iowa a better place in technology. 
uh, tech jobs in Iowa. Um, if you look at the numbers, there are around 92,000 tech jobs in Iowa, and I'll kind of go through what those jobs look like. Um, but 92,000 is the number. Uh, the average salary, when we go to college campuses or talk to kids, we want them to be creators of technology and not just consumers of technology. And this is the biggest selling point for them. If you look about the average tech salary in Iowa, 81,000 as compared to just the average salary in Iowa of just general uh, workforce is around 45,000. And so much, much higher in this industry. Um, uh, and so that's just something that we want to uh, encourage people to go into. And you can really create uh, technology solutions that better our world and our environment as we're seeing right now during this unique time of COVID. Uh, there are top five industries here in uh, Iowa technology. They are IT services and custom software services. So those are people that like Shift Interactive or Blue Compass, I think is out in West Des Moines who build websites. Tech manufacturing, those are the Wells Enterprises, the Sukup manufacturing. Telecommunications and internet services like carrier access, uh, a testing, uh, and engineering services, think about Pearson or ACT or administering online testing. And then people that are building software like Douala uh, here, here in Des Moines. Um, next, jobs and salaries. I'm just going to go briefly through and demystify what the heck an IT worker might do in Iowa. Uh, these are general people. We do not use actual people. So don't, Mitch does not really exist. This guy's name isn't Mitch. Uh, but uh, we wanted to give you an idea of what the heck what do these people do that we represent in the industry? Well, Mitch is a software developer. Uh, you can see his salary range. He's gonna get out of college and uh, he's gonna make around $62,000 right out of college. Uh, they can pre create computer programs, they create applications that allow to do specific tasks on computer devices, and it usually requires a bachelor's degree. So think about a mobile app on your phone, think about those sorts of things. He builds that software and that user experience. Uh, and you can see that uh, it comes out of college um, at a really nice uh, salary rate. Now, if you think about a web developer, uh, somebody that uh, you know certainly doesn't need a college degree, uh, but a high school associates or a master's degree, depending, depending on the employer, but these are people that build websites. You want a new website? And we have Laura here. Uh, so when we encourage people, we see people all the time hiring people with no college degrees. They have the aptitude, they have the interest uh, to be in technology and uh, uh, those individuals have taught themselves on their own through YouTube or different little platforms like that. Uh, so that's just an example. Next, you got uh, Spencer, uh, computer systems and information analyst. He designs solutions to operate efficiently and effectively. He understands the needs and limitations of both the business and the IT teams. This usually needs a computer science degree. And as you can see, coming out of college, what the, the salary range is for computer systems and information analysts. Uh, next, you have Stephanie we have here. She's an information security analyst. This is the largest growing uh, part of our industry right now, which is cybersecurity. And cybersecurity more so now than ever when people are working remotely. Now your company's data has to be secured. Uh, this and data analytics are, seem to be the, the two that are uh, really rising in the industry field. Network architect, Clay, uh, he builds in communication networks, uh, intranets within companies. You need a bachelor's degree or a computer science degree usually for this, uh, this sort of, uh, uh, this sort of uh, position. Next, you have CIOs. So these are the top dogs of like a principal financial. Uh, uh, principal financial here in town or a nationwide or a Wellmark or a Wells Enterprises. So our board of directors really consists of CIOs uh, across the state of Iowa of the largest companies. These guys uh, and individuals um, uh, used to be thought of as a cost center just not really integrated with the business. Now these individuals are sitting right next to the CEO. They're sometimes becoming the CEO because they know the capabilities uh, of, uh, of the technology, what it can do. Uh, this individual, this smug individual that we put, picked this picture of Harrison, um, he's a CEO of a startup company. And so if you think about Gwala, you think about other companies here in town, uh, 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 Benham, uh, there's a lot more. These are started by people that want to create technology solutions, so they said, I'm going to build my own company. So you're seeing a lot more of these around the state of Iowa as well. So now with our mission is to build and unite Iowa's technology community, uh, we do five things. Public policy, so we advocate for computer science, education across the state, we advocate for uh, venture capital uh, dollars, uh, angel investor uh, tax credits for people to invest in companies, just a couple of things in the public policy realm, connecting leaders, developing talent, promoting public relations, and fostering diversity and inclusion. Just a couple. 
Uh, so we do a handful of things that who do we bring together in our membership? CIOs, uh, CISOs, and roundtables. So if we have a closed door meeting with the Unity Point Health CIO, a Wellmark CIO, and these top CISOs in the whole, uh, in the state of Iowa, and we're talking about data breaches, how you worked with the FBI to go and do forensics to find out who was doing the data breaches. They're sharing information. So what we do is bring technology individuals together just to share information and make sure that the state of Iowa can have a peer network where you're sharing uh, with technology individuals and like-minded individuals. Uh, just a couple other things that we do for programming is the We Are Iowa Technology. Uh, it's a video series where we uh, really uh, demystify what technology companies in Iowa do. Uh, we also have a Catalyst series uh, and uh, where we talk about, um, it's really our diversity angle of really trying to share stories about people who are blazing new trails and that don't look like a, you know, the normal everyday person that you see walking through the skywalks. And I'm going to get into this here in just a little bit uh, and share another screen. Uh, next, we have the Iowan Project. And I will pause here and I will share a little different part of my screen. And we'll start here with the Catalyst Series. Uh, the Catalyst Series, and I'm going to scroll down basically to show you the real faces of the people of the Iowa technology industry. Right here, you have Ike Brown. He works at Wellmark. He pr protects their data centers and data security. And so uh, he's a really in in uh, important individual. You have Praveen Mohan here uh, from Pella Windows. Think about when you go online to try to buy windows for your home, how many different sort of iterations there are, sizes. He has to catalog all that and make it user experience friendly so people can do e-commerce online. So that's Praveen. Uh, Luis Moreno is a guy that is an IT apprenticeship at, at, uh, at uh, Ruan Transportation. Think about Ruan and the trucking industry and how the logistics and not only that, but electric vehicles that will be going into that marketplace. Uh, next is Eddie Etsy, and I'll, I'll finally just talk about Eddie here. Eddie is the CIO and runs all the technology for the University of Iowa athletic program. So think about that. Think about Fran McCaffrey, Kirk Ferentz, and all the technology they use. Think about the technology on game day. That's all run with this guy right here, Eddie Etsy, who runs all of the University of Iowa athletics. If a coach wants to buy a piece of hardware or software to look at uh, breakdown statistics and data analytics, Eddie's the guy that manages those things. So our Catalyst program is really an opportunity for us to share stories that you really wouldn't think about, like University of Iowa Athletics and how they're leveraging uh, all that technology. Uh, next is the Iowan Project. Uh, so this is our opportunity to try to recruit former Iowans back to the state of Iowa. You can go to the iowaproject.com. The city of Weston Wynn is a member of ours, uh, part of this project. But this is a map database where you can find Iowans. So my call to action here is, if you have a, uh, a relative, a brother, a sister, a, a son or daughter, have them go here and drop their pin on, on the map here for the Island Project. Uh, an example here, so here's the Denver Metro. If I click on the Denver Metro area here, what comes up is a list of people that were born and raised here that identify themselves as Iowans who are now saying, hey, uh, I wanna receive quarterly information or weekly information about jobs, updates, things that are going cool in Iowa, like the Google Fiber Partnership in West Des Moines. But you can go down here and find out where people are from, born and raised, and where they're living now. And we have active, a database of these individuals where we're actively recruiting and, and sharing with them. We've had a few success stories too, so we're actively recruiting for this project. But you can go to this website and, and plunk around. You can go in the search engine and put your hometown of Sioux City, for, for instance, press enter. You can find out where all the people in Sioux City now are living that have self-identified and put their name on this map. We have around 3,000 people right now in the database and that's growing. So. Please share that with your people outside the state of Iowa. That is our recruiting tool to move back. We're seeing ever more so now with people that are leaving urban uh, dense areas that are moving back. This is a really good opportunity, we think, to have people move back to the state of Iowa and, and utilizing um, uh, the state of Iowa and utilizing uh, our, our, our wonderful, uh, not only lifestyle and quality of life, but really to create technology solutions uh, here in the state of Iowa. Let me get back to my slide deck here if I could with your patience. really cool, Brian. I love the Iowa project. It's so fascinating. You have a thousand people in that database? Is that what uh, you said? 3,000 people currently in the database. 
And what we do is we have meetups around the country, or we used to, we we're doing it next year, but we've been to Denver, uh, we've been to Chicago, uh, we have been to Minneapolis, uh, we've been to Kansas City, uh, and each individual meetup we've had, we've had at least one or two people move back after that, uh, just because people are really willing and wanting to move back to the state of Iowa if there's a job opportunity, and we really believe that you can work in a technology career here in the state of Iowa and, and, and make good money and, and do it uh, hopefully close to mom and dad. Uh, TechStream Iowa is a website that we've launched uh, with the partnership of Wells Enterprises, again, the ice cream manufacturer. Um, if I'm a parent that I moved to town, it's easier for me to get my kids into a soccer club or a baseball team than to get them into a computer science or coding club. So we created TechStream where it's parents and teachers can go online and find computer science and tech clubs around. Whether that's they're teaching little kids how to code at a, at a, at a, at a, at a public library in uh, southern Iowa. But this is an opportunity for people to connect uh, and learn how to do uh, computer science and make that more of a, a thing that, that uh, students are, are more apt to do. We have a smart security video series that we do. Uh, Cybersecurity is, is ever more so important. And so we do uh, little tips and things like that for our members uh, with a good partner in Pratt with smart security. Uh, we, so connecting leaders, we have a whole host of events. We have an Iowa Technology Summit that we hold every year uh, in, in the state of Iowa. It was going to be in Cedar Rapids, it will be virtually this year. Here's an example of it. Um, we want to put people on stage that look like these young people. And so what we do, we underwrite the costs, it's free for everybody, and we want to make the production value something that is special for these individuals. So you can see kind of a group of the individuals here that showed a little bit about what they do in their industry and what they do for their companies. And again, trying to get people to think about, hey, the Technology industry is for me, and I, that is a place that I can succeed. Uh, and we do that through the Iowa High School Technology Summit. We have the Iowa Technology Summit where we bring together a thousand people, and we really share things like um, user experience, cloud, uh, and how cybersecurity, innovation, things like that. And we really share knowledge as an industry every year. Um, and with that, my shameless plug, I know you guys are members of the West Des Moines Chamber, but uh, we are always looking for people to become members in members' companies and be part of this, this movement that behind me it says, Iowa is a technology state. We really believe that. Uh, and, and ever more so, we're really focused on the mission of building this really unique industry in the state of Iowa. Uh, so with that, I will pause. I will stop sharing my screen. And uh, I'll open up for questions if you have any. And, and uh, thank you in advance if you do not. Thank you so much, Brian. Amazing. You guys are always pushing the envelope, being very, very innovative, which, you know, tech is all about innovation. And I love the Iowan Project, the Tech Stream Iowa. I was not familiar with that. That's so neat. Um, your Smart Security Series, Tech Summit, Prometheus Awards. I mean, the list goes on and all the neat programming that you're doing. It's absolutely fascinating. So thank you so much for all of your information here. It's incredible. I'm sure people have questions. And so I'm going to turn the virtual stage over to Kara Batheson. Kara is our Director of Workforce. And just like you, Brian, you said that, you know, workforce attraction and is a key talent development. So Kara heads up our talent development division of the chamber and our workforce. We're working on the Leadership Academy as you speak. We're almost, uh, almost all set with our new class. So that'll be a fun announcement here coming up in the upcoming weeks. But Kara, take it away. Thank you. Yes, well, it looks like we've got a few coming into the chat box already. So why don't we go ahead and start with Paul. If you want to unmute yourself, you can be our first question. Perfect. Thanks, Kara. Thanks, Brian. Um, first off, I don't think I heard it announced, and I want to make sure everybody knew. Congratulations, Brian, on your Impact Award with the Prometheus Awards. That's uh, long overdue for everything that you've done, so congratulations on that. And I, my question is kind of here almost what Katie's commenting on. Um, so tech is continuing to grow in Iowa, and it's encouraging to see that. And I'm just curious about with what you're observing, uh, with all the initiatives that you have in place right now, how does the local IT talent that we have today reflect the demands that businesses have for those IT folks? And then how do you think that's going to change and adapt over the next couple of years? Uh, so is your question, do we have enough workforce to fill the jobs? Is that kind of the angle there, Paul? I know we don't, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, you know, how is, how is the trend line? Because, you know, it seems like with some of these projects that are in place that, I mean, you guys are really doing a job. So, I mean, are we catching up or, or what do you think? 
Yeah, you know, I don't think we're Austin, Texas or Northern California or places like that. But I can tell you, um, our companies now are aggressively recruiting on a national and global level. And do our local tech talent, you know, if you're an IT worker, you're going to have a job here in the state of Iowa. Uh, but also, I think we're seeing a shift where uh, I think uh, teachers and schools uh, are really starting to see computer science education as part of the core curriculum, uh, where you think of like a, a home economics as part of the core curriculum here in the state of Iowa and computer science is not. Not to diminish home economics, but we're, we're at a point now where we need kids to be creators of technology, not just consumers of it. And so you're starting to see a shift um, in, in, in schools and classrooms uh, to, to really to, to get people uh, thinking about the, 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 the vocabulary of the tribe, getting people interested in uh, coding and computer science. And so those are things that we're really seeing an interest tick up in, in the school districts. But you know, teachers don't, by and large, my mother was a teacher. She didn't go into teaching to teach computer science education. And so it's easier for me to be a high school football coach than it is for me to get into a classroom to teach computer science. And that's a problem. And so we're trying to work about how do we get our technology professionals into the classroom uh, and to help uh, individuals you know, grow in that field. But we're, there, there's a definite shortage of IT workers here, but we're really seeing a shift with young people being interested. Awesome. Thanks, Paul, for the question. And thanks, Brian. So going off of that, then Katie had a question about, do you, does your business have to be a member of the Iowan Project to be a part of that recruiting process and getting them back here? No, but by chance, uh, the city of West Des Moines, so we've partnered with four of the largest chambers in the state of Iowa, West Des Moines, uh, Cedar Valley, the Cedar Falls area, Ames, uh, uh, Des Moines, obviously, and Iowa City. And so they're all members of this. And so we all go in with this together. And because West Des Moines it is a member and we work with Clyde Evans, uh, the database of information, those contacts are actually open to you guys. And so we don't publicly show those to everyone, but that back end database is certainly um, uh, welcome to uh, the West Des Moines Economic Development Office because I know they're actively trying to recruit. But also we do newsletters regularly. And so if there's information you or your companies want to push out, we're open to that. And we're always looking for content to push out uh, to, to, our, to our readers outside the state of Iowa. Awesome. Well, that's good to know. Thank you, Brian. That's a huge, huge resource for everyone. Um, one thing that our team wanted to ask is how can the chamber play a role in helping you? We want to bring back as much um, build up the workforce as much as possible here. Um, I know I had a meeting recently with Rachel with the city and we were kind of brainstorming on some ideas. You mentioned that you pushed newsletters out there. So we talked about, you know, the chamber could provide content on what makes West Des Moines so great to not only work, but, you know, live and play and raise a family. So that's one whole side of it. So you have to sell them on a job opportunity, but you have to sell them on the community as well. And we all know how great this point is, but we gotta let everybody else know. So is there anything else that you know we as the chamber can help with or anybody who's on this this call, this event today that can, can help with that besides just getting people to drop their pin? Uh, specific to the island project, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, I think um, we always call the island project, this is the people's project. And so uh, we, you know, we think that everyone should be a part of it. And I think there's, if you guys, like I said, can reach out to family members or your own businesses to think about your, think about your networks, join the Island Project, put a pin on the map. Um, but I also think you need to know that you as a community are doing a wonderful job. You as a chamber are already doing a wonderful job. And West Des Moines has a lot of technology companies uh, as a part of your ecosystem. I think the Google Fiber uh, is a huge selling point. I'm telling you, when people are gonna work remotely when schools are going to be virtual um, to talk about fiber to your business or home and a partner with google i just think it's a huge deal and so if there's uh i think you have a wind at your back already uh but i think i, I and i also think it's been really i've been really impressed in the des moines metro area and when you have so many different suburbs west des moines has really carved out their own space in in, in the in the metro area as being a forward-leaning entity uh, that really is progressive and, and from just the quality of life, but technology, the infrastructure, the companies you have. I think about DMU, my wife's a DMU grad, gonna be moving out to West Des Moines. I think you have a lot of selling points, uh, I, but, I, but I also uh, 
I just think uh, we just need to continue to beat the drum. And if the Iowan Project could be a vehicle to get that message out to people outside the state, we're all for it. And, and again, this is the People's Project. So anything we can do together, we would love to do it with you. Absolutely. And going off of that, another question about the Iowan Project. Can you talk about the meetups that you do? You know, do you encourage the um, people in any given area to coordinate their own meetup and network there? Or do you want to be, you know, the one facilitating that so you can use the Iowan Project to promote West Wind and bring them here? Uh, yeah, well, uh, so the meetups we've had uh, five and over the last year and a half, and we average around 50 people. So, and it's after work. And people are just super interested. They get a ray gun t-shirt. Uh, they get a, a, a sticker. And I think one of yours was West Des Moines is the best Des Moines or something like that. And, and these individuals come and I'm telling you, they're really, really interested. Now, what I would do, or I, you, you could do, what I've encouraged my hometown of Sioux City, you could start the West Des Moines project and, and maybe try to go after those who have grew up and moved away, who went to Valley or went to Dowling or have some sort of connection to West Des Moines. There are a lot of those individuals outside the state of Iowa. Uh, we do our own meetups, but we also encourage other individuals or communities to do that. We just know there's a high cost in that. And so that's why when the four largest chambers have bought into this, uh, we just take on that cost of renting the facility, the food, the travel and all those sorts of things. But we totally encourage people to you know, take, take this, this a project in their own slant. Awesome. I love that they get that West Des Moines Best Des Moines shirt. We love that. Right. <laughs> Um, another question from Bailey is, how do you think COVID will impact the tech industry especially in regards to workforce? Well, the impact that I really see um, is, uh, I don't know, unfortunately, on the commercial real estate market. I can tell you I have lots of members that were building these dynamic workspaces uh, with, with pinball, pin pool tables and pinball and, you know, a beer on tap and this, this, and I'm seeing companies that were literally seconds, weeks away from opening a new space, now saying, wow, my team is almost more productive and happy not all being in the office. And so I think uh, you're going to see an impact on commercial real estate. And I think the virtual remote workforce is here to stay in a lot of ways. I think contract workers uh, are going to be more useful now. I think it's going to be impacting in a major way. But I also think you're going to see companies see themselves as technology companies more. And so what does that mean? I, in, in our industry, diversity and inclusion is a huge deal. Because when you want to create a technology solution, you need to be around people that have come from different walks of life to create that solution. Uh, and so for us, the recruiting tools from out of state, that's why when we do things like Catalyst, we want to show people that, you know, there are black technology workers here in the state of Iowa that are doing cybersecurity or data analytics. And so we need to be an inclusive uh, industry and an inclusive state in that regards. But to me, the impact, remote working is not going anywhere. Even when we come back to the office, there'll still be that flexibility. I can tell you on a personal level, I was so anti working from home before this. And now I'm saying it's not so bad. My team is pretty productive. Uh, and so I'm thinking the impact really I see is going to be on the physical infrastructure of commercial real estate. It's funny, I think a lot of people maybe had that assumption or that stigma towards working from home before about how, oh, they're probably working, you know, X amount of less hours each day. But I think most people have found that's not the case because you still have your job to do and it's more important than ever and you have to over communicate in this working from home environment. So it's, it's going to be really interesting to see what industries and what businesses shift to make this a long term. Um, work from home environment and what, who kind of hybrids it and, and how that all plays out in the next few months and years. So thank you for that insight. And then I have another question from Paul and he wants to know, um, are there any other exciting tech projects that are in the works for Iowa that maybe haven't been fully publicized yet? Uh, you know, the one I could have told you a week ago was in my embargoed uh, knowledge of the Google uh, partnership with West Des Moines. Uh, but you think of things uh, like Apple, and I see Tim Albrecht uh, is on this call with Apple. I think their impact of moving to Iowa, you look at Amazon now, uh, and I just think we're getting so much investment from national technology companies, it's a big deal. But I would also say there's a big movement, you know, buy local when it comes to your restaurants and things like that. I would push back to say buy local when you're talking about building your website. Think about the caucus app debacle. That, that, 
that could have been built here in Iowa. We have technology companies. Uh, the, the, the state's uh, uh, COVID website, uh, it was built in Utah. Things like that, I think people need to start looking local and buying local when you talk about technology. Uh, and, and so, but, but I also put a plug in from your previous question. I think there's a need now more than ever for chambers of commerce and trade associations because the power of convening large groups of people like this is really powerful. And I think people are seeking to convene and connect with people in this environment. So I just think the work that you guys are doing with things like this are so needed now more than ever. Awesome. Well, I gotta give a quick plug and shout out to Kinsey Co. Colleen Kinsey is on here and that's who we, the West Wine Chamber worked with um, last year for our new website. So she's awesome. So if you're looking for um, a new website, her team is amazing. She's got a really cool story. So quick plug for some local talent right there. Thanks for being here. So any other last minute questions before I hand it back to Catherine? Anybody, anybody? Awesome, okay, Catherine, back to you. Thank you, Kara. Thank you so much for all that great information and wonderful questions, really appreciate it. So I would like to turn the virtual stage over now to Nicole Langmay. Nicole is our financial expert. She also does a lot in our IT space. So she, she does everything for the chamber, honestly. So when I think of IT and who's helping us with that, that's uh, certainly Nicole has that on her shoulders. But uh, Nicole handles a lot of our operations. So uh, she's gonna tell us a little bit about upcoming events. So thanks, Nicole. Yeah, thanks, Catherine. I have three events that are coming up very shortly that I want to mention. Um, next Tuesday on the 14th, from 8 to 9.30, we're doing our um, fifth installment of the Business Survival Toolkit series. Um, this week's topic is going to be uh, Top Secrets for Sales Success, and that is a free event. You can um, sign up on our website for that. We'll have a panel of expert sales professionals um, from our area that are joining that call. Uh, the second event is next Wednesday, the 15th, from 7.30 to 8.30. We will have our uh, Breakfast Before Business event, which is hosted by Shai Pattery. Thank you for that. Um, and then third, we are doing our uh, Metro-wide golf tournament. So if you're looking for a safe way to network um, in person, but social distance, um, we have our golf tournament. Registrations are online. They will be early bird ends July 31st, and that event is August 27th for next month. And then two to keep in mind, um, they're a little bit further out in September, our first responders appreciation breakfast, which will be keynoted by a retired Navy SEAL Lieutenant, Jason Redman, is on September 9th. And then the very next day, we're doing our September luncheon, um, with Jamie Pollard from um, Iowa State University, and that's happening Cyhawk week, so that'll be September 10th. So lots coming up. We're very busy, but uh, be sure to tune in for all of those. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. And we've got Maria Davis, I see, on the line, and she's one of our expert speakers that's going to be at our Business Survival Toolkit Sales Success event next week on the 14th. So that's going to be fun. It's going to be a fast paced, fun event. So, uh, you know, we did a COVID survey, gosh, some weeks ago, we have a new one that just went out. Thank you, Nicole, for spearheading our second survey to get insight um, and attention as to what our businesses are thinking of during this, during this wild time. Um, in our last survey, it, I found it really interesting. Our whole team thought this was uh, very interesting, but 79% of our members of the West Des Moines Chamber of Commerce said that they feel their companies will be stronger a year from now. And I think that's just truly and truly incredible. Our West Des Moines leaders have that sp spirit, that drive, that innovation. They know that they're going to do what they can to make sure they are going to survive and uh, be even stronger a year from now. We've got the belief, the conviction, and the mindset to make uh, things happen. So we love that. We love that spirit of West Des Moines. So uh, I want to thank again, Shive Hattery, Make-A-Wish. Uh, really, thank you guys so much. And I uh, want to say thanks again to, to Chris Nelson, who's our board chair, who's on today. He's an expert at Shive Hattery, and he's our 
fearless leader of the chamber. So we want to thank Chris Nelson for all that he's done. And this is a wild time for everybody. It's such an unusual year, but, uh, but we're doing great things. Watch for future announcements. We have four interns that are starting tomorrow. Four, not one, not two, but four interns that are starting tomorrow. They are the most... <laughs> gosh, the most talented young people. And, uh, and it's going to be incredible. So watch for news on their amazing uh, additions they're going to bring to our team. And we have a lot of new programming that's coming up this fall too. So watch your email newsletters, which are all brand new. And make sure that you also see our new Tuesday West Des Moines newsletter, which spotlights what's going on in news in West Des Moines. So again, thanks to Brian and make a wish and, and shive hattery. So hope everybody has a wonderful weekend coming up. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Good to see you. Thanks everyone. <clears throat>